Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Ashley Evans, the founder of the Ashley Exchange International, and we are on day 19 of 31 days of Proverbs and Prayers. So thank you all for joining this morning. Uh, I'll go ahead and open this up in a quick prayer. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for just being you, God. Thank you for your love, your kindness, your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Father, we appreciate you allowing us to have a restful sleep for waking us up and giving us the strength to make it through another day, Lord. Father God, we don't take it for granted, Lord, the days that you give us breath in our lungs, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, as we dive into your word, we just ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to magnify your word and to begin to highlight the areas in our lives that we need to adjust and to allow you to move through, that we will come in full and complete alignment with your will. Father God, we thank you that you are entrusting us with such a task of being your children, of being the individuals who are called to steward your word faithfully, Lord God. We give you all the honor and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So um, I'll be reading from the Amplified Version for Proverbs 19. So the first verse says, Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is twisted in his speech and is a short-sighted fool. Um, integrity is something that I know in this season the Holy Spirit has been highlighting a lot. And I recognize it's important to understand the importance of it because of the simple fact that a lot of people um, have not been walking in integrity. And a lot of leaders, people who have a lot of wealth and power and stuff, um, typically they fall short in this area. But here we're seeing that, you know, regardless of your socioeconomic status, like better is someone who may have less, but have more character. Like they may financially not be at the top, but if they have the character, if they have integrity, if they, if there's somebody that God can trust, better is that individual than someone who has all the wealth in the world, but lacks character. Verse two says, also, it is not good for a person to be without knowledge. And he who hurries with his feet, acting impulsively and proceeding without caution or analyzing the consequences, sins, misses the mark. And this is really significant because the reality is there are a lot of times, and I'm sure we can all attest, even in our days, either before we came to Christ or when we were in that transition of making adjustments in our lifestyles, um, there were times where we made very reckless impulsive decisions um and the reality is is because we did not have the knowledge we did not know exactly what the consequences could be and so ultimately this is just a reminder that you know when you feel that anxiousness when you start feeling like i just, I'm just go pay attention to that and make sure that you're making a wise decision and not just moving off of your feelings and being impulsive because it could lead to consequences that are more long-lasting than what you wanted. Verse 3 says, The foolishness of man undermines his way, ruining whatever he undertakes. Then his heart is resentful and rages against the Lord for being a fool. He blames the Lord instead of himself. And I've seen this happen quite a few times. Often you'll see it with... Um, You'll see it with a lot of people who have walked away from the faith and they want to blame God. But the reality is, is that God is not to blame for the consequences they experience. Um, like they were functioning in a foolish way. And it says a lot about people when they can't take accountability for their own actions. And there are times you will hear people's arguments and you're like, this has no logic or rationale whatsoever. But the reality is, is that in their mind, their mind has really been taken advantage of. Like they think they are correct in what they're saying, but they have not processed the fact that they are the ones who have led themselves astray and down the wayward path. Verse 4 says, wealth makes many friends, but a poor man is separated from his friend. And sadly, this just brings more awareness to um, socioeconomic um, disadvantages and the, just the the classism that exists in this world. Um, a lot of times what we don't realize is that when people are lacking financially, sometimes there are individuals who walk away from them because of the, the lack that they have. 
Verse 5 says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. And this is just a reminder for anyone who has dealt with someone who has blatantly just lied, whether it was on you or whether they're just going giving false information. Um, it can We can get really upset, but many times throughout Scripture, God t- tells us that there will be consequences to those who lie. And we have to remember that he is our vindicator. He is the one that will repay. And so we are learning every single day not to be so emotionally moved that we feel like we have to we have to be the ones to uh, rectify situations or create a revenge or avenge situations. Verse six says, many will seek the favor of a generous and noble man and everyone is a friend to him who gives gifts. Verse seven, all the brothers of a poor man hate him. How much more do his friends abandon him? He pursues them with words, but they but they are gone. And that kind of sounds similar to verse four in regards to, you know, just not having the loyalty and the commitment from some people when you are lacking financially. Verse eight, he who gains wisdom and good sense loves, preserves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good and prosper. And that's that's true. I feel like even now, a lot of us are going to see that happen in our lives because we are constantly seeking to hear from the God. We are being open to wisdom. We are being open to understanding. And it does so much more for our soul than what we think. Like in your mind, you may think, I'm just waking up early. It's a sacrifice. Sometimes I'm tired. But the reality is, is that you are feeding your soul and your soul is being built up. And just a reminder, your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Verse 9 says, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes lies will perish. Now, this is twice that's being said, and oftentimes in Scripture, when God is repeating something, um, you know, that's like a red flag. Like, he's trying to let, let us know, like, he does not play with false witnesses. And those who tell lies, they will, they will experience a negative consequence. So here he's saying they will perish. Verse 10, luxury is not fitting for a fool, much less for a slave to rule over princes. Verse 11, good sense and discretion make a man slow to anger, and it is his honor and glory to overlook a transgression or an offense without seeking revenge and harboring resentment. And this is important for us because one thing the enemy likes to do is taunt us through people who are closest to us. And it's easy for us to regress and fall back into that state of, you know, clapping back, you know, getting upset. But what we have to understand is that as we grow in wisdom, as we grow in understanding, those of us with good sense and discretion, we won't be quick to just start arguing with people, especially when we know there are people that are not sound-minded enough to process what they're doing. Um, But we want to be somebody who... It's not to say we're pacifying the transgression or offense, but we're choosing to understand that God will handle it. And it's better that he handles it rather than us trying to um, handle the situation on our own because that oftentimes causes it to be even worse. Verse 12 says, The king's wrath terrifies like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as refreshing and nourishing as dew on the grass. Verse 13, a foolish, ungodly son is destruction to his father, and the contentions of a quarrelsome wife are like a constant dripping of water. And I thought that was interesting that um, here, well, once we have to remember, this is a male voice speaking to a son. And so um, when I was reading it, I was like, well, what about fathers, you know? But uh, the Holy Spirit was just like, you have to remember, this is a male, a father speaking to a son. So therefore, he's giving him insight, not just about his behavior as a son towards his father, but also um, in terms of like what he should be thinking about when he is looking for a wife. Verse 14 says, house and wealth are the inheritance from fathers, but a wise understanding and sensible wife is a gift and blessing from the Lord. And so this is just a beautiful reminder that um, because there are all women on this call right now, 
But it's a beautiful reminder because of the simple fact that as we're building in wisdom, as we're building in understanding, as we're becoming more and more sensible, you can be you can rest assured that you are truly a gift and a blessing from the Lord for whoever God positions you with or whoever God has positioned you with. Verse 15. Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, unmindful of lost opportunity, and the idle person will suffer hunger. Now, I recognize a lot of people, um, a lot of people fall, like struggle with this laziness component. Um, and sometimes, you know, it impacts people who aren't lazy, but they feel like because they're not doing something all the time that they are. And, you know, yes, there are consequences for being lazy, but understand there's a difference between laziness and resting. Like there are many of us who need to simply just rest and that will give us the strength to get back on track versus there are some people who just don't want to do any work whatsoever. Verse 16. He who keeps and obeys the commandment of the Lord keeps guards, keeps guards his own life. But he who is careless of his ways and conduct will die. And this is really important because ideally the number one thing we should be intentional about is keeping and obeying the commandments of the Lord. And as much as people try to make it seem like it's this extremely hard thing, what, what you'll find is that the more that you engage with God and his word, the more the Holy Spirit gives us the ability and the desire to commit and, um, and honor and obey the commandments. Verse 17, he who is gracious and lends a hand to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him for his good deed. And I think this is important because a portion of giving is giving alms and when you give alms that's actually giving to the poor and so whatever whenever the holy spirit leads you to give to the poor do it with quick obedience not just so you can get something but understanding that it is a good deed it is something that will bless someone and that um, brings joy to the heart of our father verse 18 discipline and teach your son while there is hope and do not indulge your anger or resentment by imposing inappropriate punishment, nor desire his destruction. Verse 19, a man of great anger will bear the penalty for his quick temper and lack of self-control. For if you rescue him and do not let him learn from the consequences of his action, you will only have to rescue him over and over. And I think this is very important for parents uh, because a lot of times, Parents have this um, desire to protect their children. They want to rescue them. But then when they see their child doing the same cycle over and over, they don't realize that they have um, done more harm by always trying to go rescue a child, rescue their child. And I know they do it out of love. I know they do it because, you know, they don't want to see their children um, experiencing those consequences. But what we have to realize is that um, after a certain age, they're accountable for themselves and God needs to become their their full-time teacher. And so I think this is important because I know from my educator background, I would see this all the time. And um, I know that we have some parents on the call. And so just to be mindful of when you're raising your child, when they hit a certain point, there are certain times like they're going to have to go through the consequences for the um, mistakes and the error of their ways. Verse 20, listen to counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction, that you may be wise in the time to come. 21, many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand to be carried out. And I think this is really important because right now, a lot of people have a lot of plans and a lot of people doing a lot of things, but if it's not aligned to God's purpose, for that individual, honestly, it would be like wasted time. You know, um, thankfully we serve a God who redeems time, but we want to be mindful of, you know, consulting with God all the time about the plans that we're doing. You know, I know for me, I come up with a lot of ideas, but ultimately I have to ask the father, okay, is this me or is this you? Because if it's not you, then I don't want to even step into it. Verse 22 that which is desirable in a man is his loyalty and unfailing love. 
but it's better to be a poor man than a wealthy liar. 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Uh, when I read this, it really just uh, reminded me significantly, significantly of how amazing it is to have a reverence for God and how there is so much protection in that, how it is so life-giving. And when it says so that one may be one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. And the reality is, is that the more that we come to the knowledge of who the Lord is, the more that we um, engage with him, the more that we revere him, there is a peace and assurance that comes upon us that helps us to recognize that we're covered, we're protected. Like no matter what the enemy tries to throw at us, because of who the God we serve, we are in a good place. Verse 24, the lazy man buries his hand in the flood, I mean in the food dish, but will not even bring it to his mouth again. Verse 25, strike a scoffer for refusing to learn, and the naive may be warned may be warned and become prudent. Reprimand one who has understanding and a teachable spirit, and he will gain knowledge and insight. 26. He who assaults his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and disgrace. Verse 27, cease listening, my son, to instruction and discipline, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Uh, this is important because if we stop listening, that is like us trying to, sh that's like self-sabotage. So we have to be mindful of not allowing ourselves to ever get to this point where we think, oh, well, I, kn I know this, or this is, I don't have to worry about this. Um, make sure that you're always remaining teachable. Like we have to be teachable. We need to be willing to receive instruction and discipline. And if you're, if you're cautious about the person giving you instruction and discipline, always take it back to the Holy Spirit because he will reveal to you. He'll let you know if this is somebody who has your best interests in mind or if it's someone trying to sabotage you with the information they're giving. Verse 28, a wicked and worthless witness mocks justice and the mouth of the wicked spreads iniquity. Verse 29, judgments are prepared for scoffers and beatings for the backs of thick-headed fools. All right, so... Um, one a common theme throughout the scripture was that there was a lot of information shared from a parental perspective, like a father telling his child what should happen. And then also a father informing other parents just how you should function with your kids, how you should manage them. And then a, another theme was just a discussion of, you know, socioeconomic statuses and how oftentimes the wealth, although you may have money, you may not have a character that can carry that wealth. Or you may be poor, but it's better to have integrity. And it's also important to realize that if someone is poor, they may not have all the friends in the world because of the simple fact people, sadly, people of the world have this mindset where they um, gravitate to what looks glamorous, what is wealthy, and things like that. And they tend to not want to engage with those who have less. And so with those things in mind, um, you know, we're going to pray over a couple of topics that the Holy Spirit highlights. I um, definitely want to cover children because I feel like a lot of Proverbs is connected to, from, it's, it's written from a perspective of a parent to a child and trying to help raise a child in the way that, you know, they should go, in the way that God desires for them to go. And so definitely want to cover children, um, covering parents as well. Um, even if you are a parental figure, like a lot of us, there are young people that we interact with, whether it's a cousin, whether it's a niece, nephew, um, a friend, a godchild, whatever the case may be, um, we are positioned to be good stewards as uh, parental fi figures for those children. And so we need to make sure that we take heed to this too. We can't just say, oh, I don't have physically have children, so it doesn't apply to me. No, like we function as a village in the body of Christ. And so therefore there's a responsibility for us to, to ensure that the next generation is walking in the way of the Lord. And then also um, with all the revelation that was given about wealth, 
you know, wealth, God is doing a wealth transfer. God is presenting wealth. And so we want to cover each other in regards to um, stewarding the wealth, but maintaining a godly character when we have wealth. Um, understanding how to be wise with the wealth that God is bringing into our lives so that way we won't be foolish. That way we won't be liars and um, lack integrity. All right, so I'm going to start with praying the Spirit. And once again, always have a notebook or something near you. So as the Holy Spirit re begins to reveal things to you, you can take notes um, because that's just how he operates. He will reveal some things to you. So it can do do ko she he kiri a bo ko she he kiri a bo ka de de ko she e pe ko do do ko she kiri a bo ko she kiri a de do ko she kiri a de de ko she kiri a de ko do do ko she kiri a bo ko she kiri a de do e pe ke do ko she kiri a bo ko she kiri a de ko do do ko she kiri a de de ko she kiri a bo ko do do ko she e pe ke do do ko she kiri a bo ka de do ko she kiri a bo ko she kiri a de de e pe ko do do ko she kiri a de ko she kiri a de ko do ko she kiri a de ka de ko do do ko she kiri a bo ka de do ko she e pe ke do do ko she kiri a bo ko de do ko she kiri a de ka do do ko she kiri a de ka de do ko Hallelujah, Father God, in the mighty in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity to come to you, Lord God, and to engage with you through your word. Father God, thank you for being our ultimate teacher. Thank you for being our parent. Thank you for giving us guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord. Thank you for giving us counsel, Lord God, that we would know what to do and how to do things, Heavenly Father. Father God, as you as we were reading through your word, Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit just began to highlight the importance of children being raised in the way, Lord God, that you desire for them to be raised. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just want to cover children, Lord. We want to cover their minds, Lord. We want to cover um, their hearts, their bodies, their, their um their purposes, Heavenly Father. Just cover them and pr pr bring a hedge of protection around them, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we know that you are raising up a powerful generation of children, Lord, who are bold, who are courageous, who are not afraid to... Um, to do things on your behalf, Lord. So, Lord, as you are raising them up, Lord, position us as your servants, Lord, so that we can function appropriately and according to your word and your will by pouring into these children, Lord God, that we would not allow ourselves, Heavenly Father, to be dismissive, Heavenly Father, or not, or allow ourselves to think because this is not my birth child or this is not, um, or I'm not pregnant, or I'm not married. Lord, help us not to think like that, but to recognize that you have instilled something within all of us that can be used to pour into the next generation, Lord. Father God, I just pray that you open the eyes and the ears of all the children, Heavenly Father. Lord God, give them a heightened sense of knowing through the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Lord God, bring a hedge of protection around their eyes and their ear gates, Lord, that they will not be exposed to the darkness that the enemy tries to um, contaminate children with early on heavenly father lord god i pray that you will begin to send teachers and mentors and leaders lord god that will impart wisdom into these children lord that they will be wise beyond their years heavenly father that they will walk according to your way lord god early on and they will do it unashamed heavenly father and lord god i pray for parents lord i recognize parenting is not an easy task with this generation lord that lord i recognize that parenting is um it truly is a blessing, it is a gift, but Lord God, it requires your strength. So Lord, I just cover every parent, Lord God, every individual, Lord, who has been called to raise up someone that you have entrusted to, to steward the life of that child, Heavenly Father. Lord, give them strength, give them strategy, give them divine revelation, Lord God, about their child and the children that you position around them. In the same way, Lord God, every parental figure, meaning every one of us on this call, Lord, whether we have children physically 
you're not. Lord, you have called us to be examples and role models for these children. So Lord God, help us to be intentional with the time that we have with them. Help us to articulate your word in a way that they are understanding and that they can receive it, Lord. Help us, Lord God, as parents and parental figures, Lord God, to cover these children day and night, every single day, Heavenly Father, to be alert, to be wise, and to recognize, Lord God, when something is off, Lord. And help us to not be afraid to speak up on behalf of the children, Lord God, that they may know they are not alone, that they may know that they don't have to fight every battle on their own. And Father God, we just cover the uh, parental children, relate the parental child relationships that have been dismantled and destroyed by the by demonic attacks, Heavenly Father. Father God, if there's this communication, Lord, we ask that you would restore communication, Heavenly Father. If, there, if anyone is harboring any hatred or resentment, Father God, we cancel and we rebuke it and bind it in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And we declare that you are bringing restoration to families, Lord God. And this is not just for little children, Lord. This is for just kids in general, Lord. Father God, we just pray that there is a healing that takes place among families, Heavenly Father, that parents would not be warring with children, Lord God, but they would come on one accord under submission of you, Lord God, understanding that there is a purpose and plan for family that you need to be fulfilled, Lord God. So, Father God, we cancel every tactic of the enemy to try to dismantle the family unit, Lord God. Father God, we thank you in the mighty name that even... Even as we're talking about parenting, it's not left up to a wife or a mother, Lord God, but parenting will be something that the men will do heavily, especially for their young boys, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we just call upon godly men who walk as the priests, prophets, and kings of their households, Lord Heavenly Father, that they would take up the mantle of being God-fearing of fathers to their children, Lord God, that they will be present, that they will recognize, yes, you make provision financially, but children need the presence of their fathers. Lord God. So even now, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you begin to go in and just reverse and dismantle any um, discord that is lying among families, Lord God, that has caused fathers to be distant from their children, Lord God. Heavenly Father, for the children who feel alone, for the children who feel neglected, for the children who feel like they can't turn to anyone, Father God, we break that spirit of sadness and depression in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We declare and decree, Lord God, that no child has Heavenly Father will be tormented by the deep by demonic activity and voices, Lord God. Father God, silence the voices in the mighty name of Jesus even now. Even as they sleep, Heavenly Father, we declare and decree, Lord, that you will speak life into them. You will remind them that they are loved, they are covered, they are protected, Heavenly Father. And if there are any children in dangerous environments, Lord, create a way of escape in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, show yourself to them, Lord God, that they can be reminded and reassured that you are the one true living God, that it was never your will for them to be hurt in any capacity, Lord God, but you are faithful and true to your word and you are ever present with them, Lord God, that you will snatch them out of that situation, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, any parent who has uh, forsaken their role and who has mistreated their child, Lord God, bring them to repentance in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that they will understand that they did not steward well what you give, what you gave them, who you gave them, Father God. So Heavenly Father, Father, Lord, we thank you that you are exposing and revealing and rescuing, Lord God, those individuals, Lord, who are those children who are in households with parents who do not love them the way that you called them to love, Lord God. And we just declare and decree in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that even before the year is out, Heavenly Father, there will be a supernatural increase of a shifting for the better, Lord God, that missing children would be found, Lord God. Children who have been hurting, Lord God, will experience love. They will be repositioned in homes, Lord God, where they can be loved by people who serve you and want the best for them, Heavenly Heavenly Father. Father God, let not our generation coming up be, be destroyed by the tactics of the enemy, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that even now as we are praying, Lord, you are breaking um, you are breaking attacks of the enemy, Lord God. You are fighting in the spirit. You are sending your angels to fight in the spiritual realm, Lord, against the demons that are trying to hinder and, and destroy a whole generation, Lord God. And Father God, we just pray for an awakening in the adults of this generation 
generation, Lord God. Father God, that there will be no more slumber and sleeping, Lord God. That there will be an awareness of what's happening in the spiritual realm. That there will not be passive, Lord God. Heavenly Father, let us rise up as parental figures and parents, Lord, and protect the future generation, Lord God. Let us not be like in the days of Joshua, Heavenly Father, where after um, he left, Lord, that the people did not know of you, Lord God. They did not know your ways, Heavenly Father. Let it not be so, Lord God, that we raise up a generation that does not know your name, Heavenly Father. Lord God, help us to avoid the situation where they go about living lives according to their own will, Lord God, because we recognize it creates a broken cycle, Lord God. We recognize that it will reverse everything that we have been fighting against in the spiritual realm. So, Father God, let us be the, the individuals who speak life, who impart the knowledge that is necessary. And even now, Lord God, forgive us for trying to live with a selfish silo mentality, thinking that, oh, well, it's only about my family. It's only about me. It's only about my child. Father God, we rebuke that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And all right, just fill us with the communal mindset, Lord God. And remind us that we function in community, Heavenly Father. Even as we're going through the Proverbs, Lord, Lord, we can take these nuggets and impart it into other individuals who may not understand, who may not know, Lord. God. Let us do our due diligence, Heavenly Father, to function as a community for the for the for Christ, Heavenly Father. Lord God, that we would not think too highly of ourselves, Lord God, or we would not think so lowly of ourselves that we don't have the capacity, but Lord, that we would be obedient knowing that you have given us the insight for a reason. You have equipped us. You have given us a charge, Lord God, to be the voice for you, Lord, not just for adults, but Lord, also for children, Heavenly Father. So Lord God, even now, even in the coming days, Lord, help us to be mindful, Lord God, of the conversations we're having, even as we prepare for the holiday when we get among our family members and we get among you know young parents and we get around children lord god let us be the light heavenly father even for them let us impart your word to them through love lord god let us be a reflection heavenly father of you to where they are they are engaged they are intrigued lord god they want to know more about what is cause who is causing us to be in, to live in such a manner that is peaceful that is fully your joy that is full of your your love heavenly father and heavenly father lord god we also just want to cover um Father God, we want to cover uh, finances, Lord God. I recognize that, yes, you are creating, you are giving a lot of us ideas, Lord God. You are giving a lot of strategy, Heavenly Father. There are a lot of projects that are being um, established, created, or even completed. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, the wealth that is coming upon us, Lord, I just pray for a special um, knowing, Lord God, of how to steward the, the funding, Lord God, and how to not just steward the funding, but how how to maintain a godly character and nature, Lord God. Let us not fall into the trap of receiving wealth and becoming haughty and prideful, Lord God. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus to remain humble, to steward the finances well, to be givers, Heavenly Father. Let us not be um, tight with the, the blessing that you have given us, Lord God, but help us understand that the money you're giving, Lord God, is an opportunity for us to build even more in the kingdom of God, Lord God. There are so many things that we need, Lord, to represent you, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, we know that you desire for us to function in excellence. So Lord, even now I declare and decree that everything that we produce according to your will will be done in excellence. It will be top notch, Lord God. And it will draw individuals, Heavenly Father, who don't even serve you, Lord God. But because they see the quality of it, Lord God, because they see the heart behind it, Lord, they will be drawn towards it, Lord God. Whether it's a product a service, Lord God, or whether it's an institute, an e-course, whatever you are telling us to create in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you that it is on, it is honoring you and drawing, creating opportunities for people to be drawn to you, Lord God. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. And Father, I thank you that you are every single day, cleansing our heart, purifying our heart, examining our heart, Lord God, that we would keep a posture of, 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 
of submission, Lord God, that we would not allow ourselves, Heavenly Father, to fall into the trap, Lord, of thinking we're too good and we don't need to pray. Father God, forgive us for ever thinking that we were all correct and we didn't need to do something, Heavenly Father. Father God, help us to live a repentant lifestyle that when we do make a wrong uh, wrong decision, we immediately know that we need to take this before you, Lord. And even if it's an area of struggle for some individuals, Lord God, Father God, help us to be honest with you and to not create lies to ourselves and rationalize our way through stuff and try to minimize your word and try to throw out grace Father God, Lord, we know you have a standard. And Father God, we know that your grace does not give us the opportunity to sin freely, Lord God. But your grace is utilized to help us to overcome sin. So Father God, even forgive us now as a body of Christ, Lord, for the times where we misused and took grace out of context, Lord God, where we tried to use it to justify our wrongdoings, Lord God. And we, even when we had not got, we even when we had not repented yet, Lord God, forgive us, Heavenly Father. Father, Lord. And Lord, I declare and decree, Lord, that we will stop misusing your word, that we will stand in, a, in the authority of Christ, and we will declare and decree, Lord, that those who are broken, those who are um, struggling with understanding the context of your word, will come into a fresh revelation, Lord God. They will come into understanding, Lord God, and they will know, Heavenly Father, that it is repentance that is necessary, true turning away from something, Lord God. It is renouncement that is necessary necessary, canceling every yoke that was created and every stronghold that was created through the sin. Lord God, let us be diligent in doing this every single day and not become lax, not become passive, Lord God. And Father God, declare and decree that because we are in your word more, we will release the word over those situations, Heavenly Father. And we will see turnaround, Lord God. We will see the power of the word come into fruition, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, I just pray for every single person who is on this call and who will hear this call later, Lord God. Father God, let us live a life, Lord God, of surrendering to you. Let us live a life of obedience. Let us live a life where we desire to be set free from the things that are holding us back from becoming and doing what you have called us to do and be, Lord God. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray, Lord, Lord, that you would continuously highlight those things, Lord God, that you desire for us to boldly go in and do and say, Lord. Father God, we are your vessels, we are your messengers, and we recognize that you are sending people into our lives for us to be a representative on your behalf, Lord God. So let us not miss it, Lord God. Open our eyes, let us be alert, let us be vigilant, let us be sober-minded, Heavenly Father. Let us um, be pure in heart, Lord God. Let us be a aware with the right spirit of you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, continue to build us up, Lord God, that we would not be lacking anything in you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, I just thank you for choosing us. I thank you that we are your royal priesthood. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are joint heirs with Christ, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have positioned us, Lord, on high positions, Heavenly Father, in the spirit realm. And that is because simply we chose you. We choose you, Lord God. And we are choosing, Heavenly Father, to live lives according to your will in our way in your way and father god even now i recognize we are getting closer and closer to the end of the year lord god so lord as we're doing that begin to allow us to reflect on you even more begin to give us more insight about the instructions you're giving us lord god i also lift up health lord god let us be wise with our health let us make decisions lord that are glorifying to you father god after christmas whatever instructions you give us regarding our health let us be quick to obey heavenly father even now begin to shift our taste buds begin to shift our cravings lord god that when the time comes to make the complete change lord there will be no delay there will be no hindrance there will be no excuses lord god but there will be a supernatural shift in the direction of what you have called us to go in heavenly father and lord god i thank you lord that there um will be more breakthrough taking place i thank you that we are not without hope so even now lord if there's any anyone who has been doubting and questioning what you have said you would do, Lord God, we cancel those thoughts of disbelief and hope in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare and decree, Lord God, that because you are the one true living
living God, that we are to trust you, Heavenly Father, that you will not forsake us, Lord God. So Lord, even if we have an image of how something is supposed to happen, if it is not to be done in that way, Lord, dismantle it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us just maintain hope that the promise will be fulfilled. We may not know how, we may not know the exact time, but we can rest assured that the promise will be fulfilled. So therefore, Lord, if there are any false narratives that we are running through our head, begin to dismantle and destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, just for our protection so that we would not, um, be ready, waiting for something that you never said would be ours or waiting for something to happen in a way that you never said it would happen. Lord God, we want to safeguard our heart and our mind from falling into spaces of disappointment with you, Lord God, because we know that is not true, Lord God. We want to make sure that we have um, godly, healthy expectations, Heavenly Father, that we would not be drawn astray, Lord God, that we there will be no room for resentment or um, animosity to come into our our hearts, Lord. In fact, if there's anybody who has grown, re grown restless, if there's anybody who has grown tired, Father God, bring your healing wind upon them, Lord God. Father God, breathe new life into them, Lord God. Lord, we cancel those feelings of resentment and animosity and we, we bind them up, Heavenly Father, and we decree and declare, Lord, that they will fall back in love with you, Lord, that they will have a clear understanding, Lord, that you are doing things in a new way, according according to the will that you have established and that you keep our interests in, in mind, Heavenly Father. Lord, you are mindful of us in every aspect of our life. So Lord, let us not forget it. So Lord God, begin to just bring, I just pray, speak peace over the life of every single person on this call. I, pre I speak a soundness of mind, Heavenly Father. I speak a joy, Lord God, that we would get excited, Heavenly Father, for the things that you've done, for the things that you're doing and for the things that you will do coming up, Lord God. So Father God, I just um, pray for protection over every single person, Lord. I declare and decree that there will be no backlash or retaliation, Lord God. And Father God, we just seal every single prayer with the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for joining the call. Um, I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful Monday if you are going to work. You know, God is still moving. He's still operating each and every one of us. And if you're not, definitely use your time wisely. Spend some additional time with God. Take notes. Write down what he's um, telling you. Even now, if you, as you get off the call, try not to rush back to your bed. Um, take some time to really let the Holy Spirit speak to you and begin to reveal some things, some additional things to you. Because, um, you know, I may have said something, but, you know, it will awaken your holy. It will wake awaken your spirit, and the Holy Spirit will want to download more revelation into you. So once again, thank you all for joining the call. The replay will be up shortly, and God bless you. Bye.